Welcome back to the Agent Goldmine. Here is what you can expect from today's show. How to use the DISC assessment to lock down your lead generation strategy. The smoothest for sale by owner script that you have ever heard. How to get an appointment booked the same day you talk to the seller, the first time you talk to the seller, and the most unexpected way to save $11,000 every single year. Today, we have Kaylee Lynch, who is out of North Carolina, who is a 25-year-old who crushes it with Fizbo's. And she's a solo agent with a toddler, and she's at home all day, like living the lifestyle that she wants to live while still crushing it with these Fizbo's that she gets off of Zillow. So follow her. She has a ton of really, really good advice in this episode. That's so follow her on Instagram. Her Instagram is Kaylee Lynch Realtor, and that's spelled K A Y L E E Lynch L Y N C H dot Realtor. Give her a follow. You're going to freaking love this episode. Gold miners, welcome Kaylee Lynch. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Okay, so Kaylee, this is the the way that I first come to know about you is because once upon a time, I was moving from Charlotte, North Carolina to Lexington, Kentucky, my husband as well. And Drake, my husband, is in charge of figuring out what we were going to do with the property. We were either going to sell it or we were going to find a tenant. And so he just decided to throw it on Zillow as a for sale by owner. And he got exploded by people calling him the for sale by owner on Zillow all the time. But And so he was super annoyed. And then he came to me and he was like, Shelby, there's been a million people call, but there's only been one person who has repeatedly called me and been incredibly personable. And this girl is like a fucking, she's doing the things. You need to talk to her. And that girl is you, Kaylee. Well, that's just so exciting because I mean, ever since speaking with him the first time, we definitely got somewhere with the first conversation. I figured out it was his mom. She was inspiring because she, you know, does a lot of these fix and flips as herself. So, and that's kind of the path we're going down. But then being able to connect with you guys, you know, just kind of set us off and here we are. Yeah. And so today I really want to talk about that because there are so many agents who will call for sale by owners, maybe one time, maybe twice and never make any progress, never stand out. And so today I want to go really deep on what you're doing to build your business, which is targeting for sale by owners and how you are doing it. So can we start with why for sale by owners, why for sale by owners, Kaylee? So for me, you know, when you get your license, they have you do the whole personality test and they give you your results. And based on that, they tell you the type of people that you may work well with and the type of activities that you would do well, cold calling being one that came back for my personality that worked out well. And then so the very beginning, I never thought about it. I was too nervous to cold call. I just wanted to do my sphere, had my son and I realized, okay, I need a a specific target and I need to work with specific people and I need to make that work around my home life and for sale by owners just fit. They were there. They get emailed to me every morning. They're very easy to organize. I'm a people person. I love talking and I just try to, you know, come at them with the intent of, listen, I appreciate that you want to sell this property on your own and I know it's possible. So I just want to kind of take the ride with you guys, see how you do over, you know, X amount of time. And if I can become your agent in the long run. Great. So it just to answer your question, it really is what fit my schedule. It fit my personality. It was a group of people that I felt comfortable reaching out to understanding why they were selling the way they were trying to. So all of that together, it just kind of made sense. Question. I'm obsessed with like personality assessments, like two of all, mm-hmm. I love them so much. Mm-hmm. What, what was the <laughs> assessment that you did? And what was the result that told you that your cold calling would be a good fit for you? So I did the disc. I joined with Keller Williams and that was something that from the very beginning, they, they, you have to do it. So I had to do the disc assessment test and I came back a D or an I. I wish I knew exactly what that meant. I cannot remember <laughs> from the personality test. We'll be able oh. to tell you. <laughs> Don't you worry. I know exactly what that means. 
So I am the D or an I, which I'm just not afraid to put myself out there. I will door knock. I will cold call. I will talk to a tree if I had to. Like wherever we're going to get some traction going is is how it's going to happen. I've picked up clients visiting properties and guys walked down the street with their dogs and he had a cute dog and we started talking and I now connected him with my buyer's agent and she's going to help him get a house. So people for me, it was just people, but I know you know more. So you go. (laughs) No, it's okay. And I'm not going to make this whole show about the disc assessment. Although if anyone does want to geek out on it, I have this really cool like breakdown and I have a Mm -hmm. bunch of tools on which lead gen strategy for your whatever. Okay. We're not doing that. Moving on. Kaylee, you're a DI. That's awesome. You're you're picked up for sale by owners. I want to go through this. Like Ali, Ali and I love to go like really deep into the nitty gritty. So you mentioned you have for sale by owners email to you. Yes. Every day. You go on to Zillow, you go to the buy section, it pulls down the little tab, you'll see that it very clearly says for sale by owners. So you click on those. Now, I was not very specific about my saved search because with the for sale by owner, they're popping up everywhere, everywhere in North Carolina. And I decide based on that day and and what my schedule is like, how far out I'm willing to travel. So right now I have a listing in Greensboro, Concord, Shelby. I try to stay like an hour and a half. And so every day when Zillow gets a new for sale by owner, because I have that saved search set up with them, it just goes directly into my email. And I look at it, I see the location. And this is very important. I always, the second I get the email, I copy and paste the address and the phone number and I put it in a note sheet and I have a note sheet for every month. So like this year, I already have January's list and then February's list and then March will get its own list. But the second they show up in your email, you have to copy and paste the address and the phone number because if you do not, they are going to get so bombarded with agents Majority of them are going to take that listing down in two days because the only people calling them is agents. And then you'll have it sitting in your email. But when you go to get to it, the the owner's information isn't going to be there anymore. And it's just going to say off market. So from getting the safe search, they all go directly into the email and then directly into my note sheet. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from people in my office that I need to take you know, more advantage of our command and our CRM system. It doesn't work for me. It just doesn't because (laughs) I'm not kidding. I go on there. And so it's, it's also important that that was why they were my market. Like my son is also a huge involvement in my business because he's home with me 24 seven. And so if I am on the phone walking around the yard because that's also entertaining him and I'm having a great conversation with someone, I don't have time to now open up another app on my phone, go into command, type in everything that we just talked about, and then remember to set up a task. Because so many times, everybody who has a toddler, they know you get off that phone call and now he's just rolled down the hill or spilled water or did something. And now I'm going and taking care of that and going back, making my next phone call. And I never went and set up that task. And now I have no notes on it. And I have no idea when I last talked to Bob or Sue, no clue. So the note sheet for me, and everyone's different, and some people are great with technology. But for me, it's every single call is in one place. I go down the same list every single day. I have all of the notes on one saved sheet. I don't need to go bouncing and you know, back and forth anywhere. And then it's color coded. So if there's still potential, then I color code them in pink. If they decided to list with another agent, I put them in red, but they still go into my database after that. So once I know the listing's gone, someone has it, whatever, they're still going to go into my database at, for you know future reference. If they sold without an agent, they go blue and they still get put in my database. So color coding, it kind of just helps me keep up with, do I actually need to read these notes and make this phone call? Or have they already listed? Have they already sold? And can I just keep weeding through the list until there's only pink? And confirming there. So this is just like literally just the notes in your iPhone. The notes on my iPhone. Okay. And each new for sale by owner gets its own note sheet. It does not. It's all in one note. 
for the month. So for, for example, I have my January FISBO and there, well, when it focuses, hold on one second. Okay. Here's my January FISBO. So it has the dates of when I've called, what we've talked about, color coded. I mean, you see, you know, some of them you call for quite a while. And you're writing these notes as you talk. As I'm talking on the phone. So I'm walking around, I have them on speaker, and I'm just going in on my note sheet of everything we talked about. Because some days I'm doing 50 plus calls. And what is so weird, and Shelby, you'll like this, because it probably goes back to the personality thing. Do you know how many Christine and Jimmy and Todd for sale by owners I've called? Like they all have the same name. It's like the weirdest thing. (laughs) But I swear it just from this year, it's been like four or five Christines and like at least six Todd's. It's so weird. But I don't know. You'll you'll have to look into that and let me know. But so it's just difficult to keep up with. Yeah, it's it's a lot. So I have to do it while I'm on the phone because like I said, and and even without my toddler being home, it could happen to where I'm on the call with them and we're wrapping up and I know we're getting off the phone in 10 seconds, but I have another call beeping in and I'm just going to click over to that. I might finish that call in 30 minutes from now and then have no idea what me and the guy on the call before even talked about. And that's always how it goes, especially if you're going to be cold calling I and mean, you're talking, you're talking to so many people as opposed to yeah. like open houses where you see mm-hmm. one, two, maybe 10 people come in. You kind of remember because mm-hmm. you have faces. So with, well, first of all, I didn't even know that you could change the color of the text <laughs> on the notes app on the iPhone. What the hell? That's cool. Yes. Wow. Hold and it then, down. Okay. And go to oh, font so and then, it? yeah, you just highlight it. No, no, no. You click on it and you, you like click on whatever word and then do the double click and it will open up, you know, whatever your options are. And then you go to font and it has a little arrow and then you just click on choose color and a little color panel pulls up. Brilliant. And th- Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. Okay. So then, and then also just side note about the Christine, the Todd, my, my theory on this is probably because you know how the list of like most popular baby names for 2028, you know, like shit like that. I feel like Mm -hmm. that was probably the most popular baby name in for the boomer generation. No, maybe not boomers, but you know, like a little bit older than us. So everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Everyone hates me. Everyone now probably hates me because I called 40 year olds boomers. Sorry. Uh, You're not. Okay. Don't worry. So carry on, Allie, (laughs) we're getting with, I want to know your process for being that you have your January note, your February note, your December note. Mm -hmm. What is your process on going back? Because from what it seems like you're reaching out to people as soon as they come live, along with a lot of other real estate agents. So what's your process of going back? Or do you not, you know, you, whatever works for you is working for you. Do you, what's your Um, process of going back month, two, two months back? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show. We go back every list every day. Every single day, every call that is labeled pink or every address and phone number that is labeled pink, they get a they get a phone call. Now, Sometimes I might skip a day because life happened, you know, and something happened. But for the most part, the intention is every single day, I go back through every single list of every month I have since I started doing this. And if they are pink, if they have not sold, they are getting some type of phone call or they are getting some type of mailer or something, Popeye, something here and here and there. And that's just every single day. And so that's why that's where. I started having to color coat because there was so many different things going on in the market. Some people were listing with another agent. Some people were listing with me. Those guys go green. Some people were selling with no agent. And like I said, they're blue. Some people decided that it just wasn't the right time and they needed to wait a couple months. Some people decided to rent it out. So there was so many different things, but it's so important, I feel like, to make sure you keep a list. And I should know if I called you in October, that doesn't matter that I called you in October. I need to know if that house sold or not, because at one point you were trying to sell it and either the market didn't let you and you just decided you weren't in a hurry and you rented it out. And I just need to know for next October when that lease ends, 
hey, there's a good possibility that he's going to be, you know, deciding to put it on the market right now. And if I didn't keep the lists, and if I didn't go back, and if I didn't color code, there would be no way to know that. I, I, I want to ask a question a little bit related back to your personality. Were you always mm-hmm. outgoing? Do you think you were always a D and I, or do you think that your personality has changed over time? No, this has just kind of been me forever, I guess. I, <laughs> my mom would probably never agree with that. My mom thinks that I am like the biggest and antisocial person on the planet, but that's because my mom has 67,000 friends and wants to be out socializing every day. And that's not me. I am a complete homebody. I love being at home. I love working from home. I would do all my appointments at home if I could. And that's just where we're different. But as far as really, you know, having this be what I love to do, and then being able to just call people and talk to them about their house and how we can make more money. I mean, my personality is there for that all day. (laughs) And okay, Kaylee, so your process so far is you've set up your daily for sale by owner email, the email comes in, you immediately copy and paste that address, Mm -hmm. contact information, seller's name into your note sheet, and then you start calling. And Mm -hmm. you call until you're done calling, you call all the months and all of the pinks and all of the things. Can we role play? Let's talk about what it looks like when you actually call someone. Okay. Okay. I contemplated this. player person. Ali, do you want to be the for sale by honor? She's, do you want to switch off being Christine? Let's be the Christine's Fisbo. <laughs> do you want to? Oh, sorry. I missed it. You let, let's like, let's tag team it. We'll both be Christine. Okay. Perfect. Christine one and two. All right, Kaylee, yeah. you're calling us. All right. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, this is Kaylee. I was giving you a quick call about the home on 123 Main that I think you might have for sale. Uh, let me let me guess. Are, are you a real estate agent? Yes, I am. And I know you've been getting a ton of calls. So listen, I am a broker, but I'm not calling to beg you to list it or tell you that I have a million buyers ready because I know you've been hit with that enough. I have. Well, that's why I'm calling. So I just wanted to see if you had maybe 10, 15 minutes available, we can set aside either today or tomorrow afternoon. What I would love to do is just get myself in there, take a look at the home in person, get a couple pictures and videos of the property so I can put together a little something for my database and then see if I can actually, you know, find a real buyer for you. Well, the reason I put it to sell on my own is because I, I, I wouldn't be paying you. I I don't want to pay real estate agent commissions. Right. And I completely respect that. And that's one of the biggest things and the biggest reasons of why I I specialize with for sale by owners is because I really appreciate your guys' drive and ability to sell the property on your own. I just want to get inside for a couple minutes. And like I said, get those pictures and videos to see if I actually have your buyer just sitting in my database and and no one knows about it. The photos are are up. Have you seen it on Zillow? That's probably how you called me, right? The photos are there. Yeah, I took a look at them online. The thing about the photos is it's just much easier to give them a, a very clear visual of your floor plan and of the layout when you can put together a reel that really emphasizes the property and does a virtual walkthrough for them. It just gives the buyers a little bit more perspective of your home. So, you know, and if, if it's not something you're interested in, in doing, we can t- more than, I'd be more than happy to test out your photos and, and send those out there. But in, you know, just in my experience, it works a lot better when you give them a little bit more of a personal touch with the home and have some music in the background and make it more inviting. And it just gets a little bit more traction going. If, if you're to use the photos that I've already put on, put on Zillow, can you just let me know what buyers are interested in purchasing my property? Yeah, so that that's totally fine. We can start with the photos that you have on Zillow. I can still put together a presentation and get that sent out to my database. And I have a buyer sitting in there for you. I'll be more than happy to bring them by to take a look at your home. Okay. And Kaylee, it, what what are the typical, is this what a typical conversation that you have sounds like? Or do they usually take it a different way? Because I'd love to get the leads of what objections you are. No, you are hard. I've never had, I really swear have never had to think that much or to have to support my idea ever that much. (laughs) So yeah, once I say, once I say the first line, I always get a laugh. I've never, I think maybe two people have not laughed. 
because they're so frustrated already. And that's the biggest thing. I want their information, but I don't want to be the first agent to call you. Oh, in my experience. Okay. I thought, okay. I thought this was like, Hey, comes out Zillow emails you. They are just like fresh Zillow of Fisbo and you're call you're amongst the others that are calling. So they're fresh in the list. I'm just not calling. If it says two hours on Zillow, I'm not calling them the first two hours. I need them to get a little bit annoyed with these other agents that are calling them so that my script does work. And my intent is shown by, I'm not just calling you to beg you to have this listing. Cause I really, I genuinely do do that. I go to the house, I put together a little presentation, I send it out and you know, I get feedback. It's great because it gives the seller feedback. It gives me another reason to follow up with them and continuously stay in touch versus, Hey, what's going on? Have you sold? Nobody wants, everyone's doing that. Stop doing that. <laughs> it's online. It hasn't sold. So it just, it sets me apart and and they don't hear that. And no one else in our, in my area has done that. And that's been the feedback that, I mean, even Drake said that, that was the, that was the same script that I used when him and I were on the phone. So, and then, so long story short, I go, I have found a buyer from my database and I've brought a buyer. I, if I just had a closing the 13th of this month, and it was a tricky one. It was a property on Lake Norman in Denver, but it was very, very outdated. It needed a lot of work just to get the upstairs right. And it had an unfinished basement, which was great. But it, it to get the value and to possibly do what I was recommending doing with it, which was an Airbnb, it needed a lot of money. I didn't have a buyer for that in my database. And I I tried. I have investors in there. There's no way to know if you do or not until you try. Those sellers specifically have been investing in real estate for 20 years and they never use agents. And I was like, I'm selling this property. I I want the challenge. I'm selling this property. So I got it in writing. I had everything I needed and they let me, you know, market the property without putting it on the MLS. And so when I realized I was two days away from my deadline, wasn't going to happen. I had no buyer. I was like, okay, now's the time I need to reach out to another agent. So I started reaching out to agents in the area, people who were selling in that area. And I found an agent who was like, I have had buyers looking for this property for over a year. Can you get me in a showing? And I will never forget, I was so exhausted. And I just sat down and I've oh, not given up, but oh, it was, we were cutting it close. And I was like, fine, like I'll get out there. We're going to drive out to Denver. We're going to get this showing done. We'll get it taken care of. So they loved it. They wanted to put it in offer. The sellers originally, I always know, and I always ask, and I probably should have said that when we were doing the role play, but I always make sure that they're at least willing to pay the buyer's agency fee. Because if I'm going to be reaching out Mm -hmm. Let can can we dive deep into the role play of that of what that conversation looks like? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if I'm like actually willing to pay for listing agents though, which is why I'm just selling it myself. Yeah, and that is completely understandable. And it's my biggest goal to keep your goal in mind and make sure that we can at least try everything we can possible to sell your property without doing it with a listing agent. So let me tell you a little bit about what I do. When I come over and I get the videos of your property, I want to make sure that, you know, my buyer's fee is covered. And I always assume that with these online, majority of these for sale by owners will indicate online, we will pay the buyer's fee. So I always want to make sure with you seller that that is something that you are open to because moving forward, if I spend the next week and a half on this working through my database and I don't have a buyer that's coming out of my database, but I have another agent that I know who has a buyer from his database that wants to purchase your home, I need to make sure that that agent's buyer agency is protected so I can receive my referral fee out of their buyer agency fee. Okay. So I wouldn't be paying you. The buyer's agent is going to be paying you. Exactly. I could work with that. <laughs> Ready to see me today at 12? <laughs> Come on over, girl. <laughs> Is that something you would say? Would you joke like that? All the time. I am. It's I, I'm not serious because to me, it's really not that serious. It's you're either going to let me help you sell your house for free. I'm literally offering to market your property and work for you as a listing agent for free for X amount of time. And, you know, when you do that and the reason I'm willing to do that is because 
it's hard in this market for that target to really build trust with these people. They have a hundred agents calling them a day all saying, you know, they can do all of these great things for them and no one's actually doing it until they have something signed versus putting in a little bit of elbow grease, you know, or whatever the saying is and start marketing it up front. And then when it's time, they're going to realize quickly that it's not selling without being on the MLS. Something's going on. It's not getting enough exposure. Maybe they didn't price it right. And I'm not here to offer you advice on that. If you're not working with an agent and you want to sell your house for 450 and you're putting it up on Zillow where the Zestimate right below it is 410, I'm not going to argue with you on that because we'll, we'll have that conversation later on when the market has had enough time and your own experience has had enough time to show you that that price is probably not right. Yeah, that's super wise because in the beginning, they're they're not going to listen. They are not mm-hmm. ready to hear it. It's not until people experience the pain and the time associated with all of that that they're like, oh, there's a chance that I might not know exactly what I'm doing. But uh, Kaylee, I just want to note that on in regard to your script, it's I love how you acknowledge, even in the very beginning, you're acknowledging their objection even before they say it. You are like taking the thought out of their mind, vocalizing Mm -hmm. it, which immediately makes them feel like, oh, she understands me. Oh, she is aligned with me. Whereas all of these other people who just called me are not. And the other thing that you do really well is you, any objection that you receive, you start by acknowledging it. Like, I completely respect that. I really appreciate, you know, you wanting to do X, Y, and Z. Like, my mm-hmm. goal is your goal. And I think that by consistently reminding them that it's like what's in it for them and that you are on mm-hmm. their side, I think these are things that are really, what's it called? Because they're trying to fight. They like want to fight yeah. you. But it kind of like takes them off of that defensive mode and is like, oh, wow, this girl, I actually fucking like her. I did the same script with a lady. I was in Statesville last night. I didn't get home last night until after eight o'clock because I was out there meeting with them. She's been an agent for, I don't even know how many years. She's still licensed. She's at 20. This is their, she's done a ton of stuff and she's very knowledgeable. She knows exactly what she's doing. And she was like, I love your call. You can come to my home. I'm sure I wasn't the only person, you know what I mean? That was able to go out, but to call a cold call and it end up being an agent of 20 plus years. And they're still open to hearing what I had to say and letting me come out there and look at the property with the same plan. She knew what I did for a week. She knew I talked to other agents. And then at that point I was done hoping we've built enough rapport and trust. And you can see my work ethic that when you realize it's time to go on the MLS, I'm the person that you're going to call. Your personality is like perfect. You know, no one else is bringing the humor. No one else is, well, I I don't want to say no one else is bringing the humor, but like you're being yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And, and okay. So I want to make sure that I'm, I'm following. So you call them about a couple hours after it's hit the market, which is hours. Probably 24, probably about 24 hours. Mm -hmm. after they've been bombarded with everyone else that's calling day one. So they haven't really had too much time yet to test the market to see if like a buyer wants to reach out to them directly, but they're already getting annoyed with real estate agents. And then here comes you saying, I'm not even asking for your money. I'm asking for the buyer's money. (laughs) So, okay. So then after I have, after I agree to you coming over um, to Mm -hmm. my house to, for you to take photos, for you to take videos, Can we go over what that looks like again? How fast do you try to get into my house? When do you typically like schedule that for? And what are you bringing and what are you leaving me with? Yo, real quick. This podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who'd benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that shit. Okay. So when I'm on that call, I kind of know what my what my afternoon is like in the sense of childcare. So I'm always like, I always, always ask, can we make today at 3.30 work? Because I know my mom is home at three. There's no problem. I can just go drop him off. And then, you know, he's picked up dinner, all the things. So I always, always try to set the appointment for that day. I never try to push it because if you push it until tomorrow and you call Bob and confirm that appointment, he's not going to answer the phone. And if, and if you schedule, like I've done this before, I have scheduled it for that day and I've sent a text message like an hour before to confirm. And if they didn't respond, I still show up. 
because we had an appointment. So I don't know if you didn't see your phone. I don't know, but I'm here. And if it goes well, it goes well. If you're busy, you're busy and and we'll reschedule for another time. But I always try to set the appointment for that day because you're, you have the appointment. You're going to go and there's no questions asked tomorrow, what their schedule's like, who else has called them, what they've talked about, all the things. So I always, always, always try to set the appointment that day. What else did you ask? What are you bringing? So, so I'm under the, I'm mm. the understanding you're later tonight, you're going to take, or whatever, this afternoon, you're going to take some photos, mm-hmm. videos. What does that look like? As soon as I open the door, let's continue, I guess, the role play. I open the door. Hey, Kayla, yeah. thanks for coming over. Hey, how are you doing? Thank you guys so much for having me out. And okay, it's so hard to script this because I there is no script. I don't have a script for this. We could be by this point talking about a bush in their front yard, a house I saw coming in that I don't know if they had any information about. It could be anything. I and I've questioned this. I have questioned if this is the right approach, the right approach, but it's it's not even an attempted approach. It's just who I am like I, I just want to get here. I'm fi- I'm now treating this one-on-one meeting as I'm showing up, I'm getting my pictures, I'm getting my videos, I'm leaving with a plan, and I'm kind of interviewing the seller at that point, if that makes sense. I'm trying to figure out their personality type, how how pushy, how not pushy, what resources do they need? What do they need help with? Have they looked into doing any repairs? Do they need any contractors? Do It's about what they need. So I don't bring anything. I bring nothing. I show up with myself, my coffee, and my computer. On my computer is Matrix pulled up, and it has all their criteria, like their address plugged in, two miles away, you know, all that stuff. And then if I, if, if I feel like the conversation is getting to where I can turn this meeting into a listing presentation. I take full advantage of that. And I start talking about the other homes that I just walked through before I came to see their home, what I felt there, how those homes compared to this home. And we start really getting into, you know, me actually giving them some sort of advice or opinion about the property. And then that's, that's kind of the thing. And then, you know, the people who are closer, cause you have two people, right? There's two types of people when you're working with a for sale by owner, you got the one group who is, they are a for sale by owner and they are selling that property on their own. And it's going to be on there for six months before they consider somebody fine. Then you have the second person Oh, I could do this on my own. No big. I'm going to put a sign in the yard. I'm going to get all these calls, do an open house. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be exciting. And they're just going to get annoyed because their expectation of what they thought the process was is not at all what the process is actually like. And me not setting that appointment for maybe three, four days in of them doing this while I'm there. And we've gotten to that point of possibly, you know, talking comps, talking about the neighborhood they will ask me and they will say, you know, they'll bring up something about the brokerage fee. Like, well, you know, if we were to think to do this, what would you offer? And that's when I'm like, all right, we're golden. We're getting somewhere. So you just really need to figure out the the person you're dealing with. And I think that's so important for the first meeting. And it's just, It's just me being there to do exactly what I told them I was trying to do. And if you guys want to initiate a conversation that could possibly involve me giving you my presentation, so be it. I'll give it to you. But until then, I'm just here to do what I told you I was going to do. And we're talking. We're going to talk about my kid. We're going to talk about my house I just bought. We're going to talk about all the things I have going on and what you have going on. I, I (laughs) I was at a first sale by owner meeting. This guy was trying to sell his property for two years on his own. He was so stubborn. He was old. He only had a house phone, you know, no email, like hard to get in touch with. I called him for probably eight months before we talked the first time. We talked the first time. We set an appointment. I met him out there a couple of days later. He will tell you he's the only one that does things in his house. He's got to cook. He's got to clean. He feeds the deer. He takes care of his bees. This man has a lot going on. So we could not get our appointment set up for three weeks. And we, he told me we were signing papers because the first we talked about everything over the phone and we were signing papers. Well, then I went on vacation and then I came home and then finally he was ready. So I met him out there 
and I had the paperwork and no, I'm sorry. That was the second time I met him out there. The first time I met him out there, um, is when, when we decided we were going to move forward, but he needed to finish a couple things. He hired me because I had a home birth. That's why he hired me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What? Okay. So, So that first meeting I have, it's crazy to me. It's crazy. I have signed listing agreements over conversations that involve nothing to do with real estate. And they're just like, proceed. And, and over time, you know, like you're calling these people for eight months, you know, like over mm-hmm. time, you're showing your personality, even if, mm-hmm. uh, even if you don't get a hold of them, if you're leaving voicemails, you're still showing your personality and they're still yeah. listening sometimes. So what, what does, okay. I have three questions, all different directions. So mm-hmm. <laughs> one, what is your tempo in like, how, how often frequently do you reach back out to people that are not responding to you every day, every day? If they don't call, if they don't, if they don't answer the phone, you're getting something from me every day, whether it's another phone call, it's another voicemail. Now, something I just implemented, which has worked because what annoys me is just communicate, just communicate. If you've sold it, great. Let somebody know if you haven't sold it, but you don't want to work with a realtor, just communicate that. I'm not going to continuously call somebody that's, Hey, stop calling me. You know what I mean? That's not that's not my approach. That's not how I, I don't want to annoy you. That's my whole reason I picked this market because I'm so grateful for this market. If this market didn't exist, I don't know if I would necessarily have the tools in place to continue my real estate career because of how many things I know, Shelby, I see you. I know. Yes, I'll be like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Wow. Oh, we'll talk about this later. I love it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I really do question though, because like with buyers, not everybody is going to be as open as some sellers are and some buyers are with me working full time with my son. And I know that and that's okay. And, and, And not everybody has to be okay with that. But I'm not putting him in daycare and I need to be okay with that and know how to, you know, make both worlds work together. That's so important to me. And that's why the gratitude I have for these calls that I can even make every day. I don't want to annoy you. I don't want to bombard you. I genuinely want to help you get this house sold. And if we can save the list fee, great. But if not, I want to be the one that it goes to because I know I'm going to do it right. And you know, that's just, that's just my perspective on the people I work with and why I work in this market. And I kind of just lost my train of thought on that, but Honestly, and and that's why you're successful. Like the the freaking mentality that you have of I'm grateful for Fizbos. Like mm-hmm. at, especially at your age, dude. Like no one else your age is grateful for Fizbos, and you are crushing. And that's how, that's why you're crushing. I love it. I love it. So okay, and I also want to clarify this. So if the seller does not end up wanting you to sell their house, if you're doing mm-hmm. all the would you be doing this for just the referral fee? So the buyer's agent is the one who ends up getting the majority. What does that fee amount look like? Okay. So I, I'm not doing it only to get the referral fee. I would love to ultimately end up with the listing, but if, but if I only have to market the property for a week and a half to two weeks to find another agent who has this buyer with what I've got going on in my lifestyle right now, I'm fine with that. So I'm fine to do any of the three options that I'm offering you. I will find you a buyer if I can from the people that I know and take my full buyer fee, no problem. Or I will take my referral fee, also no problem, because I spent a week and a half on it and I've referred it out. I'm done. I'm done here. I just, all I did was connect the dots and that's it. I, I don't, I'm not penny pinching on calling you and connecting with you and then calling him and he's going to close this deal for all of us. So, because I know how hard, I mean, it's hard being a buyer's agent. I just, I just partnered with one because I do not have the capacity and headspace right now to work with buyers. I would not be doing them any kind of service at the moment. When, when has, has, has this ever happened where you go to a, you know, like you mentioned, you're reaching out to them, confirming the appointment today at two. Hey, I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way there. And you get to the door, you knock on the door, they don't answer. Has that ever happened? No. 
Not, no. One lady I got there and she was like, did we schedule something today? And I was like, yeah, right now. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. She j- it's just the calls. She did. She didn't know she, she couldn't keep up with it. But so, okay. So this is another thing. Like there's, there's scenarios that happen, right? Like I certainly do not have a hundred percent conversion rate on these for sale by owners because a lot of them right now, like a lot, the amount that are listing with another agent are less than the FISBO selling on their own. They're like, they're really selling on their own right now. Not necessarily for what they should be, right? And it's not necessarily a perfect deal and what it could have been, but some of them are getting offers. And some of them, like that lady specifically, I met her at four o'clock. We work it, we work it, we work it. We have, we know the date that we're getting a listing agreement. And sometimes they will literally get an offer like the day before. But there's nothing you can do. And that's fair game. They like, you know what I mean? It is what it is. And I'm a I'm very spiritual and connected. And I feel like if I'm meant to sell that house, regardless, and this isn't maybe how you should think about it. I still do all the actions. I still do all of the work every day. But at the end of the day, when I'm going to bed at night and I'm like, oh my God, am I going to get a deal? Am I going to get a contract today? Blah, 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 blah. My brain's just like, okay, you know what? At the end of the day, if I was supposed to have that deal, God wasn't going to let me miss it. So if it's mine, it's mine. I did the work. I put in the time. I put in the effort. I did what I, all the things I was supposed to do. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, no sweat off my back. I I, I like that thinking where it's like, you you you're only stressing yourself out about the actions you can control and you're taking action, you're taking action on what you can control. Mm -hmm. And the rest is just the rest. You can only really trust the habits that you've already set out for yourself. So Mm -hmm. have, have you ever come across the objection of your age? Because you look young, Kaylee. Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. I know, you know, I just turned 25 last month. So I'm like kind of getting older. I'm not, you know, yeah, you're over the hill. So Kaylee's canceled. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's weird. Like I'm almost, I'm technically closer to 30 than 20. You know, that's weird for me. That's new. <laughs> it's a new thought. Have you ever had a seller be like, Oh, you seem young or like it had anything like that. Cause people mention it, right? Like it's never, it's ne- of course people say that I'm young and they don't, they don't ask me, you know, when people are like, they ask you, what are you 16? I don't get that anymore, but it definitely I don't know how they'll, I can't remember a specific way of how they'll bring it up. I mean, it won't be like a, like a super bad objective that I have to work past. And if anything, I always just say, like when they ask how old I am, I always start to say, oh, it's been three years of this and I'll be this year's old in however many months or whatever. Or if I just had a birthday, I'd be like, I just turned 25. So, but when that does come up, I always can backtrack verse with the things I've already accomplished, if that makes sense. So yes, I'm 25, but you know, I've been doing real estate almost three years. I have a background. I have a bachelor's degree in finance and accounting. That's kind of, you know, what shifted me down this path. I, and I love saying this because people always laugh. I always say, you know, I didn't force my husband to quit his job four years ago and start a business so that I could work for the rest of my life. This is what I enjoy doing. This is what I'm passionate about. And I'm just here because I like it. I don't need this check, sort of. And <laughs> yeah. And the fact that like you, you can't remember and you can't tell me how many times you've had this objection is that's, this is exactly my point is like a lot of people think, Oh, well, I'm young. You know, like who's going to want to sell with me. I'm 16. I'm 18. I'm 25. I turn 25 next month, you know? And that is just like an objection that they have created in their own mind. And then therefore it's like a limiting belief where you like can't even remember specific times that you've, lo- you've never lost a seller because of your age. And that's because of your confidence. And like, again, your action that you're taking. So like to everyone, anyone else who's listening, who's young, fucking get that out of your head and just do what Kaylee's doing and you will <laughs> succeed. 
Also, go to go to YouTube and watch this and subscribe and like her face because she has a little baby oh. face. But to add on to that, Ali, I was going to say the same thing. I feel like so much of it comes down to, Kaylee, how confident you are in not just what you're saying, but also you said it multiple times where it's, I'm, I'm just there to like talk and come up with a plan. And you mentioned it in your script where it's like, hey, this is what you can expect from me. One, two, three. Like you are so confident, but you also make it really, really clear as to what you do, what you expect from them and the way ahead that when you can do that, people will literally go towards the path of least resistance. So since you create that for them, they're like, yeah, fuck, I don't even care if she's 16. She's making it easy for me. (laughs) Literally. Well, and it's weird to go back to Allie's original question and just the people who think that they couldn't do something at all. And I have two pieces to this. Like one will, will, you guys will be shocked at this. You know how many FISBO meetings I have showed up to with the toddler? Like the, the million dollar one that was on Lake Norman. Come on. You don't, I don't have a sitter. Like we're ready to go. Those were the sellers that did not work with agents for 20 years. And I cold called him. My son was in the back seat. He was kind of tired. He kind of didn't feel good. And the guy answered the phone. It was the only way I was going to get my calls done was if I just drove him around. So I was like, screw it. I'll put him in. I'll do my calls. If he cries, I'm just going to tell them that he doesn't feel good. So we get on the phone and I was, I always preface, I'm so sorry. You know, if you hear anything, I do have my little one in the back seat. You know, he might get crazy. And I hung up with that guy and he texted me and something along the lines of, I really appreciate you still cold calling while your son was not feeling well. If you want to go to the home and take a look, you're more than welcome. I was the only agent they let go to this house and their ad was taken down within a day and a half. He was taking it down when I called him that morning. And I was like, okay. So I go out there. Of course, the baby falls asleep in the car. I like reverse the car in, I lock him in, I have my key and I'm like this the whole time, talking to her, looking out the window, talking to her, looking out the window. Can I see his feet kicking? Is he crying? It stresses me out so bad. So when she sees me doing that, I'm blatantly doing it right in front of her. But I mean, I, I'd hope that they would like that and didn't just think that I just left him out there alone. And then I'm in here for an hour without even going out there to check on him. You know what I mean? Draw the line. But so When I left, he called me and he was like, my wife was so impressed with you. And that's how it was that meeting that allowed me to even get that two week timeline from them to market the house. So, and the reason I said it was twofold is because honestly, you guys, I was so nervous coming on here because I was like, these girls, like they are killing it. Shelby's done this, 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 and this. What am I supposed to talk about? How I just go on and wake up every morning and call these for sale by owners and drive around the city with my toddler. And my mother-in-law was like, that's exactly what you should tell them because so many people don't think that they can do that. And so I guess my message is you can do that. You just, you're going to go a little crazy. You're going to be so overstimulated. And some days you're going to have the worst mom guilt in the world and realtor guilt. You're just going to be like, how the hell am I supposed to do all these things? Somehow I do it. And I don't really know how I just stick to the plan every day. I find things that help him, but the baby and also help me. So for example, two days a week, he goes to swim lesson and I, okay, I am a little bit lucky because my sister is the swim instructor, but so I don't have to actually get in the water with him. I just drop him off to her. I sit in the parking lot for 45 minutes and that's, the only 45 minutes I have two days a week to work completely by myself. So it's doable. You just have to not be scared to be like, hey, my toddler's home and he is going to scream while we're on this call because he's pissed that I'm on the phone. So just going to throw that out there. <laughs> I'm so glad you came with this. This is exactly what I, you know, when, when we talked about you coming on the show, I was like, this is what I fucking want. And you have delivered, but I love it. Let you go. Until we talk about your golden nugget, which listeners, Kaylee submitted a golden nugget just for you, which you can find at theagentgoldmine.com for free. Kaylee, what what is this golden nugget? It's very cute. So, of course, I'm, you know, everybody's noticed. I've had to bring him up the whole time because he really is, he's involved. It's for my son. So the second he was born, he has been an employee of my business. 
And what I do, because you're probably like, well, Kaylee, how the hell is a two month old helping you sell real estate? He is because he's so cute. I take pictures of him when we're wherever we are. If we're at my open houses, if we're putting out signs, if we're in my office, if he's crying and I could take a funny picture because, you know, toddlers are toddlers. They cry for no reason. The other day he was crying because he couldn't play with my straightener. That's hot, you know, can't help him, but I'd take it away. And he has the, he has his little backpack on and you'll see this if you go on my social medias and he's just, and he's crying, you know, and I turned it into the funniest meme and I just put the Keller Williams logo on it. There's one that's super cute. I sent, I sent to you guys of him standing outside of the open house and it has a little talking bubble. And on the meme, it just says, Hey guys, it's my mom's open house. She has all the food and snacks you need or something like that. And it's marketing. It's, it's social media marketing. It's pictures of him that I turn into a meme that I put with Keller Williams on it and all of my information. And I just post it on my Instagram stories, or sometimes I make an actual Facebook post if the meme is like really, really cute. And every year I transfer, it changes every year. Last year, it was $10,750. So I get to pay him $10,750 that goes directly into his bank account that he does not pay taxes on. And it is a reduction off my income for me because he's my employee. And oh, it gets better. It gets better. If I wanted to, I could put it um, in a 529 plan, which I, I, my accountant just told me this last year. So it was so quick. And the way we've had to move money around, it was just easier to do everything in his bank account. But eventually it will all get invested into a 529 plan and it will start growing. However, that account grows. I don't know. But that's for his school in the future. I love this golden nugget because we have never had anything even remotely close to this. And it's something I mean, there's a lot of like parents, real estate people mm-hmm. out there who benefit from this advice. So listeners go to theagentboldmind.com and get that tool from Kaylee. And at this point, we are about to head into wrap up. But the last thing before we do, Kaylee, is what does the future hold for you? So we are... Still, still doing our thing with our first sale by owners. We are trying to get ourselves situated for a second little baby realtor coming, hopefully getting pregnant with him by the end of this year. But as as far as everything else goes, same plan, still, still doing first sale by owners. We just purchased our first house last July that we will be refinancing this July and finally starting to get some of my own deals rather than keep giving them to all my investors. So that's what's next for us. And I know this, this is not like tax advice. Don't listen to this. And you know, we're not your CPAs always ask your own CPA, but do you happen to know with the second realtor, would you be able to deduct another $10,750 a year? You sure can. Wait, second realtor or second baby? Realtor baby. Second realtor baby. (laughs) Oh, oh, I blocked out for that part. Sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, $22,000 a year. Kaylee, we do a fire round for our wrap up question. So it's bing, bing, bing. Well, this is a new thing that we've started. But okay, question number one, what is your favorite app or tool? Notes. <laughs> I know she literally. <laughs> what events are you going to in 2024? Ooh. I don't have any All right, schedule. Next no, just kidding. <laughs> it's okay. You're going to come to Tom Ferry with us in August. <laughs> I'm telling you now. You know, as long as I'm not pregnant, we're going. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Question number three. How can people help you in your business? People being Allie and I or listeners. They can share with me their investment experience. They can share with me the do's, the don'ts, the holy shit, really don't do that or never forget to look for this. Save me money and save me trouble. And last question, where can people reach out to you to help you in your business, to chat because you're awesome as shit? The Instagram would probably be the best. It's Kaylee Lynch dot realtor. Super easy. And that's K-A-Y-L-E-E-L-Y-N-C-H. You got it. That realtor. Dude, we fucking did it. Perfect. And you guys know, Allie and I also live on the gram. If you would like to reach out to us, please do. I got a really good message this morning from someone who was like, actually, I should fucking give her a shout out. 
damn it. I think it's Mariah and Kelly. It's a joint account who she was like, you said to reach out. So I'm doing it. And I'm so nervous. I'm like, dude, fuck. Yeah. Always reach out, follow Mariah and Kelly's example. Talk to me and Allie and go to the agent gold mine, get the nugget. Otherwise, that is all we have for today. Kaylee, thank you so much for being on a show. And listeners, be a bro and share this show. Bye. Are you a real estate agent? Oh, my bad. Shit, sorry. is not going to work. You were doing it. Okay. You were doing it. Okay. Okay, so I would... Sorry, go, go, go. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Red, please fix this part too. <laughs> Capacity and headspace right now to work with buyers. I would not be doing them any kind of service at the moment. So, again, I kind of just lost my train of thought with that. Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.